You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 8th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where cash is king, and Mr. Robot is why you do not call us on Wednesday nights. It's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. It was a good episode this week. It, it was a good episode this week. Last week's episode was even better. It was awesome. Um, it was awesome. So, yeah, we're loving that show. Puppet, puppet, no puppet. No puppet. puppet. <laughs> the subtweeting of the Trump administration in that show is the is one reason of many that you should yes. be really binge checking, watching that show and getting caught up. Because it's, it's not even, you know, it's not There's even. There's no Sam, subtlety. <laughs> no, Sam Esmail accompanies each episode with a bunch of tweets going, and Donald Trump is a traitor and the worst president in American history. Right. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear where the writing is coming from, yep. which yep. is why writing is important. Writers, Blue Gal, are terribly important, which is why this week we're welcoming yet another new sponsor to our show. Another um, new fake sponsor, yeah. Another new fake sponsor uh, who pays us in fake money. <laughs> uh, we're welcoming this week Heritage Hole, your personal memory revision system. You see, this is not Legacy Box, because Legacy Box is an actual company that guarantees to preserve your most precious memories intact forever and actually pays big-time podcasters real money. This is instead a fake sponsor called Heritage Hole, which promises to help you misremember all your ideologically inconvenient past and burnish your brand new status as a clear thinking, sharp talking, independent. I'm an independent. Joe, Joe Scarborough. <laughs> uh, Heritage Hole will transform your old photos of you screaming your support for the Iraq war or waving around your Purple Heart Band-Aid at the 2004 Republican convention into cherished family heirlooms depicting you carrying a no war for oil sign and handing out hot meals to the poor. Heritage Hole, because Donald Trump never heard of the guy. Yep. And we I also, never liked the tweets, you know. I never liked the tweet. Well, no, no, because I have no association with him. I have no <laughs> I have no opinion. He was a terrible president, you know. But, you know, disruption is good, Blue Gal. Um, and I think we're going to do really, really well with this one, because this is sort of where Memento, which is a 2008 trope of mine, which was mm -hmm. borrowed by the um, Pod Save America people last week, uh, intersects with Philip K. Dick. So, you know, we have Science Fiction University. We have... Uh, old movies, and a really, I think, a very good business model here, which brings us to agorafabulous.com, our, uh, our new sponsor last week, our new fake sponsor last week, which will curate all of the stuff you buy so you never leave your home. This is not a service for people who cannot leave their home, right. who are ill or disabled or fragile or otherwise. These are people who just don't want to leave their house, <laughs> who just have decided, fuck the outside world. I can get everything I want here. Well, you know what? They'll get your mattresses and sheets and clothes and shoes and snacks and batteries and pens and yogas and hookers and prepared food and unprepared food and booze and racers, bicycles and mustache wax and sex toys and doggy treats, lanyards, chocolate, contact lenses, eyeglasses, house plants, all delivered to your home with one click of the mouse. Because agorafabulous.com, because it's cra – <laughs> sorry, I ran out of breath. Agorafabulous, because it's scary out there. Uh -huh. All right, All right, so we we need to talk about some uh, housekeeping Absolutely. business here. Yes, we folks. do. Yes, we do. I'm we stepping out of the way. Bad news this week. We did not uh, we health wise have, or anything no, like not that. health wise. We have joined the ranks of several other liberal podcasters in being kicked out of our Amazon Associates account. Yes, and uh, I have been There's chatting with another podcaster who also had this happen, and uh, they simply send you an email saying our relationship is over. And uh, anything you've earned after the end of September is gone. You don't get that. And uh, for this other podcaster, it was 2000 bucks that he lost, which is just, you know, crazy money. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that really turned out to be about half of the income that we receive from this podcast yes. uh, every month, yep. uh, which is hard to take. Yep. But that the day that I found that out and let you know about it was also the day that I read an article in, and, and actually after I found this out, I read an article in the Atlantic Monthly uh, that said that James O'Keefe makes $300,000 a year. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And uh, this afternoon, we we're recording on Friday. This afternoon, I read an article in the Washington Post that Donald Trump held a $100,000 per plate fundraiser 
where he served up chicken and asparagus. Sure. And uh, spoke to them, spoke to the, uh, you know, gathered horde of people who could afford $100,000 to sit there and listen to Donald Trump for 20 minutes. Uh, tell he told them for 20 minutes all about the tax cuts they were going to get, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I read that today. And for me, and, and again, we, we check in with each other. We see how our men- mental state is, our emotional state is. Yes. Um, this week was a real wake-up call to me. It, yes. Uh, in terms of how I approach money, how I approach fundraising, how I uh, approach this podcast as my work. And I wanted to share that with our listeners because to me, it was an awakening and I'm grateful for it. And I'm going to take what I've learned this week and write about it and use it. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to really get out of my comfort zone. Uh, I have a comfort zone that says I'm not a businesswoman. I'm not interested in being a marketing expert. I'm not interested in doing you know, all the SEO stuff you have to do to make lots of money. Um, mm-hmm. I I like to tell myself I don't care about money. You know, I like to be that Mr. Robot guy who just doesn't <laughs> give a shit about money. Right. Um, but I am realizing after this week that some of that is what I have coined the phrase hippie hubris. Yes. You know, just a sense of pride of not needing to bother with the nuts and bolts of making a living, which is privilege. Mm-hmm. And I need to wake up from that and be aware that, no, I have a responsibility to uh, support my family and pay my bills, which I've yes. always taken very seriously. Yes. No, no you take uh, the... the... Yeah. The paying of debts and dues and bills extremely seriously, yes, but we do. You've, you've had a very, I think, good-hearted build it and they will come. Mm-hmm. Um, do the work and and uh, and the rest will be provided. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Approach to and that is extremely charming and good-hearted, and I I I'm drawn to that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm drawn to also, that about you too. It's also uh, you know I I used to work. Um, many full-time jobs. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And there is a very clear line between showing up at an office at eight o'clock and working a hundred hours a week and et cetera, et cetera. And what we do here, mm-hmm. what we do here is, in, is believe it or not, an enormous amount of work yep. uh, because this is all, you know, we spent all week prepping for this yep. and because we do other writing. I do a blog and, and Blue Gal runs basically big parts of Crooks and Liars and helps them keep, keep going. Um, and we read everything and we absorb everything. We, we teach people how to write and we teach people how to talk yeah, yeah. and so forth. But it really is clear that um, there is an enormous fundraising gap between the good guys and the bad guys. Yeah, there is. And, but also I want to, I want to get back on the thread that I was on, which sure. is that we have to, um, as I said, get out of our comfort zones. And mm-hmm. my comfort zone was I, you know, I I am afraid to do all of the business stuff. I don't know it. It's not familiar to me. It's not something I'm good at. And I I can just say, well, I don't care about money anyway, so I'm not going to do it. And saying that, um, I also see a comfort zone that I've fallen into from time to time. I'm better at it now that I'm doing this kind of work than I used to be. But just, you know, a, a tangible thing that I buy, like a cell phone... Uh, if my cell phone uh, fell on the cement and cracked into a million pieces, I would go out this afternoon and get another phone. It wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't hesitate to do it. Right. Uh, and I would pay or charge or do whatever I had to do to get a new phone. Mm-hmm. Um, a podcast that I listen to every week and need to get through the week. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, you know, content is free. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And I'm better, like I said, I'm much better about that now that I do this kind of work. But it's easy to fall into that, where, that comfort zone of I turn this on. It's, you know, in the ether, in the cloud. Everybody gets it. There's no paywall. There's no reminder that someone actually needs to eat who's putting this together. Right. And what what I have come to see, particularly in dealing with uh, artwork and photographs and so forth that I use. I, mm-hmm. If I know the photographer or I know that there's a name next to that thing, 
I ask, I check, mm-hmm. I make sure because you you can't de- I'm I'm just going to say it. You can't depend on slave labor for your work. You just can't. You can't right. depend on slave labor for your political feel good every week. And I I have been guilty of that in the past. And I've I've had to wake up to that with my own experience. It's been easier to to get to that point. But uh, it is so hard for anyone asking for money uh, for their work in this internet environment to Mm -hmm. not feel like they're asking for charity. Right. And I have to get out of that mode of, uh, you know, petitioning in a way that says, uh, uh, I mean, I can say we appreciate your support and we absolutely do. We thank you so much for anything you can give, but it's not charity. This is our work. This is what we do. And Mm -hmm. so, I have, and this is all about me. I'm not criticizing anyone. And we do have people that we say on a podcast frequently, if you're an active military, if you're disabled, if you're spending down your savings as a retiree, right? you know, if, if you have health concerns and are worried about health insurance and you're trying to pay your own bills, this podcast is our gift to you. We understand. Mm-hmm. If you're a mm-hmm. struggling student, we understand. We've been there. We've been on food stamps. We've been on fuel assistance. You know, we've been there. Uh, But there are people who, if their phone broke, like I just said, if my phone broke, there are people, if your phone broke, you just go out and buy a new one tomorrow, you know, today, get one right Mm -hmm. now. And if you have those kind of funds, if you have that kind of privilege, then those of us who have that kind of privilege can't depend on slave labor for your weekly feel good. That's my point. Yes. Uh, So I've had to snap out of it and we have uh, started um, a GoFundMe specifically for, to pay off the <laughs> air conditioner furnace issues, which happened earlier this year where we had to get a new furnace and then after that had to get a new air conditioner. We still owe $5,600 on that. And we are, I mean, in less than 24 hours, we are one quarter of the way paid for that. And thank you so much. That mm-hmm. is such, that is just, whew, what a what a relief for that. Um, we have also started a Patreon account. Um, I will Beg everyone who already gives on PayPal to not change over to Patreon. Uh, There are a lot of reasons for that. Number one, um, Patreon makes you pay for um, their uh, processes. Their fees and services. Their fees and services. You pay for that as a donor, which is stupid because uh, on PayPal, we pay the, the fees Mm -hmm. And uh, every donation that we get, we pay taxes on, and those fees are deductible to us unless uh, the GOP tax scam passes. Right. Uh, And then we'll have to work on something else. But for now, uh, it's much better that we pay the fees than that you pay the fees. Yeah. Um, And the other thing is Patreon doesn't give us access to the money right away. So uh, PayPal, you put it in. The minute it's processed, it's in our account. We can take it out. We can pay bills with it. Mm -hmm. Patreon doesn't do that. So uh, please, if you give by PayPal, thank you. And you you don't need to do anything else. (laughs) We're 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 good. Uh, If you if you if you hate PayPal and I totally get the people that hate PayPal, you prefer using Patreon. We now have a Patreon account at our website, Mm proleftpod.com. And I want to thank Theolo GOP this week. She helped set that up. And uh, she also was one of the people instrumental in sort of getting me to change my mindset. She gave me a real pep talk about uh, the Protestant work ethic. (laughs) I said, (laughs) you know, I know you well enough, have listened to you for years, and I know you well enough to know what you're going through mentally with the Protestant work ethic and feeling like God will provide, just put your shoulder to the grindstone and keep working and and God will provide. And I'm here to tell you, you have earned it. You have earned it. You have earned it. And I was like, okay. And without crying about it, I'm going to get off my soapbox and we're going to talk about other things. Well, yeah, but, but yeah. it's, it, it is helpful. It, it focuses the mind. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and the, the James O'Keefe thing really focused my mind because yeah. that guy is pure evil. Well, and, and here, and, here, there's a couple of gravitational lenses that really tightened mm-hmm. our mind. And we're going to talk about that during the podcast. Um, one was watching David Brooks have a meltdown today Absolutely. in the paper. Yep. Watch, watching David Brooks turn into a blogger from 2004. <laughs> <laughs> right before my very eyes. Yep. I'm a blogger from 2004, and what he is saying today is virtually identical. He'll, he'll go back to being an asshole. He'll go mm-hmm. back to both sides. He'll go back to complaining and whining and equivocating and lying. Um, but it, it is so obvious that um, being right has nothing to do with being successful. Right, right. And being right. wrong on the for the right people at the right time, lying for the right people is incredibly profitable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So on the one hand... Uh, Let's just let David Brooks and I change places for a while financially. 
<laughs> you get to be the blogger who's been right for 15 years, and I get to be the asshole who's been wrong for 15 years and one day wakes up and says, holy crap, there's monsters everywhere, and I get to keep my job at the New York Times. Mm-hmm. And at NPR, mm-hmm. et cetera. And then that's over. I look over one shoulder. I see that. I go, holy shit. Really? Really? Okay. Where's my where's my, where's my my royalties? Where's my percentage? Yeah, Not just right. me, but a lot of liberals like me. Well, and, and, then, and the razor in the apple. Don't forget the razor in the apple in that in that column today, which is trending on Twitter. And, and you want to you talk about it? Because you're... I'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. The, uh, okay. Other, the other lens is, is James O'Keefe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Looking up and seeing Ginny Thomas, wife of the Supreme mm-hmm. Court Justice Clarence Thomas, giving James O'Keefe a Hero Journalism Award at Trump Tower mm-hmm. uh, after learning that his Project Veritas makes a shitload of money. And from that, he draws a $300,000 a year salary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can't fight that. Yep. I mean, we, we, yep. we cannot fight that with twigs and sticks and good intentions and sleeping on beanbag chairs. And, and working 80-hour weeks we can't, we for can't nothing. Do it. Yeah. We cannot do yeah. it. There's, yeah. at, at some point, you're like, well, no, we're right. And we, we are eloquent. And we have a vocabulary. We have a wonderful audience who supports us. But mm-hmm. uh, unless we are – there's a, a, um, a colloquy going on online right now between um, Ezra Klein and Paul Krugman mm-hmm. about Dave Brooks. <laughs> and the only reason I'm not in the middle of that is because – I don't have a column in the New York Times. Yeah. It's well, you also I... don't have a check mark next to your name on Twitter, which right. means they can phase you out. They they I... do not have to see your tweets ever. Yeah. I, I respect Paul Krugman and what he does and, and like it a great deal. I, I think Ezra Klein has been uh, a, a decent uh, reporter who has been richly rewarded by being given essentially his entire his own media company. But there is a conversation happening um, which people like us are not allowed to enter. And this is we're not being cut out of the conversation on Fox News which I fully understand. We're not being cut out of the conversation at, at CNN, which I, I understand why that. We're being left out of the liberal conversation because we don't have enough media firepower to force our way in. And that seems like a really, really shitty thing to do after having been at this for as long as we've been doing it. And uh, we can knock on the door politely. <laughs> we can ask reasonably. Uh, all of our readers can can queue up. It, that, that worked with the New York Times. Um, all of our readers can queue up and say, what the hell, man? <laughs> you know, this is great you're having this. Why? And, and not just me, but there are other people like us who are out there trying to, you know, get this shit done and get this thing fixed and get us back on track. And there's definitely a group who who have monetized this and are doing really well by it. And they all live, I hate to say it, New York, L.A., and D.C., and if you're not in that club, you do not fucking exist. And and it's time for us out here in the cornfield to start being a little more affirmative about that and assertive about that and saying, you know what, we we're out here. We've been right as long as you've been. We're as good as what we're as good with our words as you are. We are as active as you are, and we deserve a place at your table. And if you don't want to give it to us, we'd like to know why. And if there's no answer, then guess what? You're not on my team anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because you mm-hmm. really don't want my support. You really don't want us to be on your side. You if you work so hard to keep us out of your conversation. Um, you really, really don't want us there. All right, we'll go do something else. And I don't mean quitting podcasts or anything like that. I'm saying that there's a there's a price to be paid for telling people, I want your vote, and I want your contributions, and I want your three dollars <laughs> every time there's a new headline, and I want your name on a petition. But I have no interest in including you in the decision-making process, and I have no interest in helping you make a living doing what you are doing. And that has to end because James O'Keefe makes three hundred thousand dollars a year. Orders of magnitude more yep. for being a rat fucking liar uh, and being bad at it, by the way. Yep. And yep. Uh, and he has the full support of the Supreme Court of the United States, the President of the United States, Hugh fucking Hewitt, and so forth. And yep. We're going to lose this if we keep playing this way. So, shall we move on? We shall. We shall. Lessons learned. You want to talk about something else right now? I do. Uh, I want to talk about um, John Anderson. Well, you want to talk about Sam McCann and what's going on sure. statewide? Sure. Quickly? I have a. I'm holding in my hand a copy of the State Journal Register, mm-hmm. our hometown newspaper, and a gentleman named uh, Sam McCann is not going to be running uh, for his uh, his office again. Uh, he's a Republican, a state senator. Illinois, he's not running again because the Republican Party abandoned him. <laughs> because Bruce Rauner, as you might know him as uh, as Governor Hedge Fund, uh, signed into law an, a, an abortion bill. And 
with that. It allows it allows Medicaid funding for abortions in certain instances. That's it. No, no. I, I to read the paper, honey. It, it apparently allows any woman at any point in her pregnancy, up to the child being four years old, to go to a drive-through window and have her child killed and sold for parts. And and sold for parts and then have a manicure. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. No. No. Because that's on, not it. On that's the not it. Taxpayer dollar. On the taxpayer dollar. I'm not going to pay for that no. manicure. No. And 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 the deal is that this bill came up and. Uh, the resistance and the uh, the folks that are you know now really wired together on Facebook and other otherwise let Bruce Rauner know that boy oh boy were we paying attention to him yes we were uh, and whether or not he was going to veto this bill and Sam McCann cannot complain because this bill passed it passed the state house it pa- passed the state senate and uh, yes those are democratic votes. But uh, it passed, and that's that's actually a hard thing to do these days. It is uh, to pass anything out of the state legislature. It's a blue it's, state. It's money is it's hard. A... No, but but this was you know I, I I hate you I hate the word controversial because yeah. uh, that doesn't begin to describe anything. But uh, we let Bruce Rauner know that if he was going to be the block for this one, that this was a pro woman pro women's health bill, mm-hmm. and if he vetoed it, uh, he was in a world of trouble. Right. And he wants to be reelected governor. And he has uh, to. He thinks, and he's right. The mm-hmm. only way for for a governor this spectacularly unpopular and failing and, and yeah. failing to win anything is to find as many fences to straddle as possible. Yep. So and here's also what's... not to make a juggernaut of fundraising and women organizing right. be against him for a very specific reason that they would continue to quote for a year. And, so and this may... was. Totally calculating to make this issue go away. If I may quote Sam McCann, mm-hmm. I'm unable to continue on with a party or a governor who continually attack working people, who support forcing taxpayers to fund abortions, who turned mm-hmm. Illinois into a sanctuary state, who have advanced the most liberal standards in the nation, giving transgender individuals the ability to alter their birth certificates, and who, de- and who have destroyed the Illinois Right of Conscience Act. To force mm-hmm. pro-life doctors, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is no longer a Republican Party that is recognizable to me. Well, it sure as shit is recognizable to me. Yeah. And this is who they are. And it's not just him. The uh, His uh, governor hedge fund's opponent, who's a woman by the name of Jean Ives from the uh, Republican stronghold of Wheaton, says in the same newspaper above the same fold on the left side, not the right side, we were promised – a conservative reform governor. Instead, we got – now, this is the part that's hilarious, so listen carefully. We got an Ivy League gender studies professor <laughs> who around and betrayed us at every turn. That's who these fuckers are. That's – hello, David Brooks. This one's for you. That's who these fuckers are. That's yep. who they've always been. Down here in the field, down here in the cornfield, we see these people every day. Yeah. This is the Republican Party. You don't see it because you don't want to see it. And your employer pays you a lot of money to lie to other plutocrats like you and pretend that, that, that none of this is happening. Yeah. These people aren't really real, but they're real. They're, this is the Republican Party. And Bruce Rauner trying to straddle a fence and govern somewhere in some imaginary middle. Yeah, and, and make, make a case. specific issue go away right. that was going to enrage fundraisers against him. Um, Drift Glass, I know people want us to get to Al Franken, so okay. – um, the, we wrote these things kind of in chronological order, so we are going to get to Al Franken and John Conyers and Trent Franks. I, I want we sure to are. Um, uh, John Anderson passed away. Just like yeah, you know. and you know what? Uh, I knew John Anderson personally when I was in college, and uh, I, I did want to say that uh, when I was at Brandeis, he was a guest professor there, and he ate in the cafeteria. And I went, this was my uh, senior year uh, at Brandeis. I went uh, to breakfast in the cafeteria and saw him sitting there and went, took my tray over uh, to ask if I could join him. And I joined him every morning <laughs> for breakfast for about three weeks. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, I remember he had hurt his hand, his arm. He fell or something and had a, a, a cast on his wrist. I had to help him cut his pancakes for a couple days. <laughs> Uh, he was uh, lively and smart and fun and uh, liked talking to 20-year-olds about politics. Uh, and uh, he was um, – it was, it, was, it was a joy. An, he old, was actually, school, old, school, an old school Illinois Republican. Illinois, Illinois Republican. Yep. He uh, was actually the first uh, non-student to, in the world to find out that I'd gotten into Harvard because oh, I man. went and got my envelope and came in. 
to breakfast and had this big thick envelope from Harvard Divinity School. And well, he, I, I just, he, he knew before my dad that I'd gotten in Harvard. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, I, I dug. This is Science Fiction University. I dug up a clip from Harlan Ellison uh-huh. from 1980 on the uh, Tom Snyder Show, uh-huh. saying, "Well, I'm, I'm trying, trying to figure out who to vote for. You know, Reagan's crazy." Uh, am I going for George Bush and these people? And I, I voted as my Democrat my entire life. But you know, I listen to this John Anderson guy, and he makes a lot of sense to me. And you know what? I think I'm going to vote for that John Anderson. And it was like, really? It was. It really was just a moment where you know the two parties are so corrupt and so bad. And I'm so fucking pure. But I'm looking for an alternative. This John. And you know what? He. I, I go to college campuses all the time and lecture. And you know what? The college kids they love this John Anderson guy. I'm thinking, yeah, that's where I'm going to go. So none of this is new. And you were None the one. You were the one. You did oh, the yeah. same thing. You I were a exactly college student who went off or you were I that did, age. I did yeah. anything Harlan Ellison told me to do. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, of, God bless John Anderson. That was a it was a great run. You know, he's in his nineties. Yeah, ninety five. You, you don't mourn people that last that long. Uh, you you just are grateful for their life and what they brought to the world. And, well, my, and my of course was, he brought Ronald Reagan to the world, but uh no, well, my question was, now that Reagan is dead and John Anderson is dead, does uh, Jimmy Carter win the tontine? Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, yes, he does. He does. Um, yes, this he does. is the 30th anniversary this week of Harold Washington's death. Um, Former mayor of former Chicago. Mayor of Chicago, first black mayor of Chicago, uh, only black mayor of Chicago. Uh, and it, it, there's a wonderful story behind it and several good books written about it. Uh, and you've written it up in your blog. So people I've, I've need to go over to drickglass.blogspot.com. But there were lots of lessons that – Democratic Party at the national level never learned, that Barack Obama never learned to our collective detriment about how to handle it when you're the first black guy to occupy a job and suddenly all the people who you think are on your side, half of them knife you in the back. Mm-hmm. And 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 at least in Chicago, they were really clear about it. They're, we hate him because he's black. Yeah. Oh yeah. Period. No, there was Full no stop. there was no question about there that. There was no oh right, well, the right. working class and uh, no, economic. No 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 no. 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 Nope. They hated him because he's black, which is why they hated Obama. Yeah, but we yeah. have a thick you know, varnish of smooth talk from people like David Brooks, so we don't say things like that. But that's why they do it. And it's a pity that, that the people at the national level never fucking learned what Harold Washington had to teach them. Yep. Anyway, let's move on to the bulk yeah, of Yeah, the our bulk podcast. of our podcast. You, Franken- talk, you said some things about Al Franken before we started recording. I want you to repeat those for folks. Oh, on the record? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, this is a fundraising podcast, and I don't want to piss anybody <laughs> no. off. You know, I, I usually hedge what I say, trying to calculate what it'll maximize and monetize. Um, no, I, I think I, I, you know, people say, and I agree, believe the women, believe mm-hmm. women. I believe Al Franken. Mm-hmm. I believe Al Franken when he says, I'm doing what I'm doing for the good of the people who elected me from Minnesota, period, full stop. Mm-hmm. I might disagree mm-hmm. with how he was forced out. I might disagree with the process he's gone through. I might really, really be frightened and pissed off that this happened. I might be pissed at him. All those things can be equally true. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I also believe this this feels like it's half warranted and it's half Shirley Sherrod. Yeah, I, I feel like Acorn and Shirley Sherrod is going on here, too. Yeah, I do. This, this, I do. And I think Al Franken is a smart man. Um, I think we would have done very well with him um, going uh, continuing to be a line of the Senate um, following the Ted Kennedy model for the next 20 years or running for president. But that's not going to happen. Um, and this is painful, but it's also an opportunity. Uh, if we don't turn – we Democrats, if we Democrats don't turn this into an opportunity to truly reform and and truly turn out women as candidates and voters, mm-hmm. to turn the Republican Party into the women's – or the Democratic Party into the women's party. Well, and the people of color party. I really yes. am uh, sensitive to saying women's party because that means white women. Right. And we do too much of that. We do way too much of that. Yeah. Uh, all, all the underrepresented peoples. Speaking as a who, white woman. <laughs> well, all yeah. the, and speaking as a white man, yeah. I'm a race traitor and a gender traitor, honey, and a class yeah. traitor too. Yeah. So I just yeah. I, I piss everyone off. Um, but it's the all the underrepresented people who mm-hmm. desperately need a place at the table, who yep. need their voices to be heard at the at the highest levels and be taken seriously, should be the people running the party that I'm proud to call myself a member of. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that means you've got to get a bunch of. <laughs> old dead wood out of the way yep and yep. that's yep. and that means john conyers had to retire uh and i am um sort of rolling my eyes and shrugging my shoulders at the same time about john conyers trying to manipulate the electorate to elect his son to right. his seat right. uh come on man well anybody uh, anybody who's familiar with illinois politics yeah oh yeah no the dynasty the right. dynasty gene in politics 
uh, happens think, everywhere. How yeah. do you think little Todd Stroger got to be, you know, Cook yeah. County board president? Yeah. When he John has no Stroger qualifications died. whatsoever. Except how do you think Richie Daly got to be, pre- yeah. got to be yeah. mayor? Yeah. Um, it's Jim this is bulb. Richie Daly got to be yeah. mayor of Chicago. Yeah. And there's yeah. there's 20 other families in Illinois that it's equally true of. Right. Uh, because right. politics is a family business in a lot of cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's what you pass down your your contacts. Well, and that's the thing. How how long has John Conyers been in the Senate or in I mean in the House? Excuse me. Uh, you know, forever for for longer than most people listening have been alive. Uh, it's uh, it's his seat, or he sees it that way. He sees it as his seat. He sees his district as his fiefdom, and it maybe his voters are going to see it that way too. It very well uh, be. What but, you pass down to your family if you're a politician, you've been you pass down contacts, connections. Uh, money, people who owe donors. you favors, money yep. donors. You pass down an yep. entire apparatus yep. um, to the next person, presumably. And the next person is often some member of your family. Yeah, um, well, and, and the staff. I mean, in in Senate offices and in congressional offices as well, an experienced staff often runs the whole thing, you know, r- really does run the con- the congressperson's uh, mm-hmm. whole persona. Yeah. And especially if they have become superannuated. <laughs> I, you, you know that with Strom Thurmond, when Strom Thurmond at the end of his life was barely there mentally. Right. Uh, but that to me is, and, and we've gotten on this hobby horse before, it is a responsibility of the parties. It is a responsibility of Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer mm-hmm. to start looking at these guys uh, critically. And, and Nancy Pelosi, frankly, needs to look in the mirror as well. Yes, she does. Uh, and say, uh, is it time to go? Is it time to leave with grace and with my mental state intact uh, rather than cl- hanging on because this is a this is a great opportunity to do blah, 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 blah. You need to let go of that and go spend time with your grandchildren because it's not it's too hard a job and we are at too critical a point in our politics. And this is another um, lesson to be taken from Harold Washington. Yeah. Which was after Harold Washington died, his coalition fell apart because mm-hmm. there was no mm-hmm. succession plan. There right. was no plan to do for what it was. It was built around one one person. person. Yeah, and that yep. person. Well, was and that was to... Barack Obama too. Yeah, That's one exactly. lesson Barack Obama learned. Boy, yes. oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. But yeah. once it once he died, it fell apart, and they fell upon each other, yeah. and and they scattered, and they were, they get reconstituted every now and then around specific issues. But the the mistake they made was not turning it into a a, a movement that was idea driven. And not personality driven. And right now, if if the Democratic Party cannot survive the loss of Al Franken, then the Democratic Party has bigger problems than Al Franken. Right. And right. if the Democratic Party in the House cannot function without Nancy Pelosi, then the then the, then the the Democratic Party in the House needs to take a long look at itself. Yeah. Because no no party that's been around for centuries can be held hostage to the health and and good intentions of one person. Yep. And and I'm I also have started an acronym in my right now it's just in my mind but I'm hoping it'll catch on and that is top candidates for president and top stands for too old for the presidency. Yeah. <laughs> so Sorry Biden. And, Sorry and so, Joe. Yeah, Biden, Sanders, Elizabeth Warren. I don't care if Leslie Nope never speaks to me again. Yes, right. Uh, Joe right. Biden's not going to be president because Joe Joe Biden needs to go play with his grandkids. Yeah. And he yeah. can this is the thing that, that gasses me. Um all over Springfield, where mm-hmm. we live, there's a crying need for mentors, oh, for yeah. experienced people who've been there and done it and can help people not make the same stupid mistakes they made and show them how to get shit done. There's there's political mentorship should be a requirement to run for office. Yeah. You should have to sign a contract saying once I win, win, lose, or draw, I will take my experience and I will spend X percentage of my time passing that along to someone who's behind me. Yep. And maybe such yep. a thing exists. I'm not, I'm not aware of it, uh, yep. but it sure as hell should. So we've talked about Franken and we've yes. talked about – and by the way, Al Franken is going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be fine. Uh, He's, he'll be fine. He'll be you know, fine. he might run for that seat again, by yes, the he way. Might. He might. Uh, secondly, whatever he decides to do, he was the top fundraiser for the Democratic Senate, period. And he can take that mailing list and that ability uh, and and apply it to any uh, cause that he wants to. And... Give it to Mitch McConnell. Sell it to Mitch McConnell for a no. tidy sum. Yeah. No, I yeah. don't see him doing that. I really no, don't see him. No, doing... I don't see him. I don't. And I, I have a feeling, too. And I've said this to people before he resigned. Uh, I have a feeling he has plans for Roger Stone. Yes. 
Uh, oh yeah. I'm just I'm just saying. I have a feeling that Roger Stone hasn't seen the last of Al Franken, and that there will be uh, a reckoning. Yes. For uh, Roger Stone and his involvement in this, uh, getting you know the Al Franken pelt, uh, there's going to be consequences for that. Yes. Uh, Never piss off someone who's funny, smart, and has an infinite supply of pixels and ink. Yeah. yeah. And now, yeah. guess what? Al Franken's not going to be busy trying to govern now. He can yeah. devote all his time and not rep- to- Yeah. And and it, depending on whether he wants to run again right. for that seat, uh, if he decides he doesn't want to run again, then. Uh, <laughs> The gloves are off, man. That's that's gonna be ugly. Um, okay, uh, we gotta talk about Trent Franks because this yes, is do. a whole different ball game. Yes, it is. And it 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 falls under the category of theology, and this is where I want to go with this because it's really ugly. Uh, Trent Franks ha- is sixty years old. Um, he and his wife have twins that they uh, had through a surrogate. Uh, they did that through apparently an agency. And we're able to get a surrogate that, you know, was above board because they were very much in public about, we have these twins, they're from a surrogate, we did this, we were uh, careful to go, they were careful to go through an agency that didn't destroy eggs. Right. Because his only issue is abortion. Right. Uh, and so, uh, this, this, ha- he, he's experienced with this and, and pu- publicly experienced with having a surrogate as, as where his children came from. Uh, and he apparently um, asked two staffers uh, if they would be surrogates uh, for, or if they would be a surrogate uh, and have a child with him for uh-huh. his wife. Uh, but because of God and uh, requirements of natural whatever, apparently uh, the request was, we want to do this through sex. Well, yeah, you have to do it the Abrahamic way. Right. Which right. is you invite your, your servant into your tent. Into your tent. Exactly. <clears throat> and you found exactly. a new religion. And it's it's uh, Old Testament patriarchy. It's the original it's Old Testament patriarchy. Old Testament patriarchy. And that is what Handmaid's Tale was based on. Everybody that's connecting this to Handmaid's Tale, the reason Handmaid's Tale was written the way it was, was Old Testament. This, uh-huh. is, these are, this is the patriarchy. And you go through this... Uh, and it was a result. I mean, for those of you who haven't read the book and or have and have just watched the show, you really need to go read the book. The book makes it clear that all of this was created by a uh, ecological crisis. That's a big thing with Margaret Atwood. Yes. Is the ecology of the planet is dying, mm-hmm. and as a result of that, there was huge issues with fertility and having children. You see that in the show. Yes. But it's really clear that <clears throat> from the book that. Women started this thing. Conservative women started this thing. Uh, conservative born again Christian women started this thing and kicked it into gear uh, with the best of intentions, which was to save the planet and to make sure there were children and to make sure that women weren't raped or harassed. Uh, getting rid of sexual harassment was one of their goals, and they uh, that's why the handmaids wear these long robes, and that's why all of the wives wear the same dress. Uh-huh. Uh, and and women don't work outside the home is because we are protecting women from the kind of harassment and rape and sexual violence and sexual uh, display that was required of them in the workplace. It's, it's Christian that, Sharia law. Right. It's Christian yeah. Sharia law. And that's what Roy Moore wants. And right. that's what Trent Franks believes in. And so uh, something was up yesterday, Thursday, when uh, Trent Franks on the floor of the house had a prayer circle with Louis Gohmert and a couple other friends of his. Mm-hmm. Um, to pray for his career, I guess. Oh, Lord. Uh, yes, right. Well, mm-hmm. and that just shows that he had complicit, you know, people who knew all about this sure. and went along with it and well, were and, willing to and stand you, there and support him with Jesus, you know, whatever. In case you don't have time to read Handmaid's Tale, and you should, just read the book of Genesis and look for Hagar, yeah, yeah, who was the yeah. handmaid of Sarah. Yep. It was handed over to her husband to begat a child because For, Sarah could because not have a child. She was barren, yeah. yeah. And that's Sarah literally the foundation of Judaism, of Judeo Christian mm-hmm. of Ju- the Judeo Christian faith was that. Yep. Um yep. and these fuckers believe that. And they believe that is a woman's purpose on this earth is to mm-hmm. breed children for men. Yep. And if your wife is sterile, then you go find a handmaid. Yep. And, and if and, you find one on your congressional staff, all the better. Why not? And Trent and, and, and Mr. Uh, 
uh, does not Mr. Franks does not understand why that's wrong. Yeah, no, be, well, no, because it's in the Bible. Right. So you know the the biblical literal stuff going on, the crap that goes on, and and they still cherry pick. Right. You know, obviously they still cherry pick because they're not obeying half of or nine tenths of Leviticus. So, yeah. uh, but what it's you know, if it, if it gets if it gets yeah. gets their tallywhacker happy, yeah. yes, that's biblical. <laughs> And uh, it's it's gross and disgusting, and it goes so far beyond mm -hmm. what Al Franken is allegedly guilty of. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, I can't even. Please I can't be, even begin to think about it. Please uh, be my broodmare. You know, yeah, there's so yeah. much bundle. There's so much class. And well, and this is war on women. This yeah. is war on women. And to think. They really think that we're not going to fight back. I mean, this is the amazing thing. They think that we're not going to take over. And uh, seeing the whining on Twitter about this of uh, destroying lives, destroying uh, here based on hearsay. And it's like, do you know what it's like to live as a woman? Do you know what that's like, what that's been like forever? Uh, and and Saturday Night Live had that song, Welcome to Hell. Yeah. You know, this, I carry my keys through my knuckles Here's when I walk to my that, car. The ruin for us. Yeah. Vans. Yeah. yeah. Going outside. Yeah. <laughs> Elevators. And, yes. And, yes. I, and I again, I, I can't I can't leave my gender at the door. So mm -hmm. I have I've stepped into elevators and scared the shit out of the people. Oh, sure. I've had I bet you have. step out of an elevator when I stepped into it just because I'm a big, tall guy and who, and you don't know who I am. And you don't know what I'm about. You're not going to be in a, with there with a stranger. No. Yeah. I am in a closed space with a stranger who's bigger, much bigger and much stronger than I am. And that's that's unacceptable. That, that's yep. completely unacceptable. And I, yep. I don't yep. I don't. Why would I take offense at that? That's common sense. That's what you yep. that's makes perfect. If I were in your shoes, I'd do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Speaking of Bible, um, there's the giant lifeboat, the Noah's Ark of the right. Yes. Is right. being is being furiously knocked together, uh, at trying to beat the deadline of mm -hmm. the entire party collapsing mm -hmm. um, and, and being being burned to the ground. And here's something you need to keep your eyes open for. Um, and this gets, I, I want you to get back to the razor in the apple of the day Brooks column, too, because that's part of it. Yeah, well, the, go ahead. The, I, I just want to say that you need to keep an eye out for the eight, what I'm calling the 18-month rule. Okay. It could be the year-and-a-half rule. It could be the 16-month rule, whatever it is. But I have heard it three different times now um, that the Republican Party was basically fucking great. Everything was fine until 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. I've heard it mm -hmm. from Joe Scarborough. I've heard it from David Brooks. And I think I heard it from Michael Gerson. I could be wrong. But it's it's the standard now. It's the new yep. Friedman unit. Yep. Everything yep. was fine with the Republican Party while I was in it, while I was promoting it, while I was building it, while I was raising money for it, while I was slandering liberals on their behalf. Everything was fucking Jake with the Republican Party until Donald Trump showed up and mesmerized everyone yeah. and completely yeah. changed the party. He's not a Republican. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's a reactionary outlier who ensorcelled the party using some magic trick. And he specifically, uniquely, distinctly is the problem. And everyone falling in line with him after the 18-month mark is complicit. But mm -hmm. those of us who said, oh, he's a bad man, well, I'd much rather have Marco Rubio ram a bunch of uh, colossally awful tax, cuts down people's And destroy throat, health care for everybody. And destroy health care. Yeah. Yeah. As long as yeah. Marco Rubio is flying the ship, I'm fine with it. Yep. Uh, yep. But this guy... Oh no no he's the, he's the bad man and the well, bad and you specifically man. brought up Brett Stevens this week yeah, as well as the one of the people who said you know the party that I loved 15 months ago yes he's gone you know I can't even tell my children anymore how why they should be a Republican it's no. dead <laughs> no that, that that was the third one yeah, uh, and yeah, and Brett I Stevens. I swear I'm well and you hear implicit in things this this before Trump before Trump before Trump everything was just fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it was mm -hmm. green grass and blue skies and everybody got along and we were. And the thing that the thing that bothers me immensely about this is um, the number of people today who are fawning over David Brooks. Mm -hmm. oh, because yeah. he had yeah. this long column where he just wept a million tears and rent his garments and says, the Republican Party's dead. I'm homeless. I have nothing. Not him personally, but reasonable Republicans. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah. Who, who thought for a long time there was some middle ground they could stake up, but there is no middle ground. Donald Trump has pissed all over everything and everything is awful. Go back and he doesn't he doesn't even ever 
look at the voters in his own party. Nor does they he look at the exist. fucking mirror. The yeah. actual voters in his party that he and his friends have spent 30 years an enormous amount of money building and reinforcing and training and training to ignore reality because every time reality impinges, you just say both sides and you go on what you're doing, right, which they right. learned from David Brooks. Right. There, he will not look at the voters in his own party. He will not look at the media that has trained the voters in his own party. And he will not look in the fucking mirror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. he has a very, very constricted view of the universe and is very, very sad. And all the people who are now, you know, giving him Peter Dow's on their, you know, I never, I never recommend the David Brooks post, but this is just good. You no, know, just yeah, I, I let D Peter Dow know, Peter Dow know what I thought of that. And, yeah. And my, my, and this is part of the joy of being the professional of podcast is I, I respond to Paul Krugman and Ezra Klein. Mm -hmm. I tweet and, and nobody ever answers anything I say <laughs> ever. Yeah. And on, on, and Twitter at all, Charlie Pierce does because Charlie Pierce is a mensch, but the rest yeah. of these people, I could just, I, I might as well be a Russian bot as far as they're concerned. I'm just a nuisance. Yep. I'm nothing and nobody. And half of them have blocked me. So that sort of makes my life a lot easier. They I want to read not. something to you, Drift Glass. I'm going to interrupt you sure, because sure. this goes exactly with what you're saying uh -huh. <laughs> on the, on the, on the flip side of it. So uh, I have been exchanging back and forth some tweets with a conservative today on Twitter uh -oh. uh, who asked and and uh, other people have been tweeting with him. And he, he seemed to be asking a genuine question and not just throwing out, you know, some some false thing. He was really wondering uh, why had Hillary paid why had the Hillary campaign paid for the Steele dossier? Right. And doesn't that mean that everything in the Steele dossier is suspect as Democratic propaganda? Sure. OK. And explaining to him that the Steele dossier was actually solicited by Ted Cruz, you yes. know, you, you have to go all the way back there, but that's okay. If someone's genuinely asking, I'm happy to talk about that. Right. Um, I did a Twitter thread of five to ten tweets explaining all of Trump Russia. <laughs> And and really quickly, and and it's not that complicated. No, it isn't. That's the thing. Uh, that's it. It really is quid pro quo. It's it's the sanctions. They wanted to get rid of the sanctions. They found this campaign that was against Hillary, which which you know Putin hated and had a grudge against, and on and on. And you just say it, and you're done. Uh, so this guy turned on me after I explained it all, you know, uh, and said, "Your world's going to crash, blue gal. Your whole world's about to crash. Sorry." Gosh. Yeah. And I said, my world crashed last November. Right. Uh, but karma is a bitch, Corey. I'm sure you'll find a way to deny you ever supported Nixon. Right. Oh, I mean W. I mean Palin. I mean mm -hmm. Romney. Oh, I mean Trump. And then I have this picture that I put up of words because I can't fit it all in a tweet, which says, if someone releases video of Trump asking a Russian hooker to pee for him or more likely an N-word recording from The Apprentice, the individual above will insist that he, she was always a, quote, independent constitutional conservative. Absolutely. Who, quote, never liked the tweeting, unquote, and <laughs> that, quote, Trump wasn't my first choice for president. No, he wasn't. And Corey responds, if your world crashed with Trump, it must be you are an elite. Right. Coming on Twitter trying to control public thinking. Right. Because you are about to lose your corrupt power. Yes. Only people who benefit from corruption want things to stay the same. Yes. The working class is in power now, not elites. Mm -hmm. And I said... <laughs> Your populist god just held a fundraiser for $100,000 a plate to tell chicken and asparagus eaters about their tax cuts. Six people on Trump's economic team are from Goldman Sachs, and they're coming for nursing home funding for working class. But the part that I wanted to share with you, Drift Glass, yes. is uh, a, an account called This This Is Hell? Question <laughs> mark. Mm -hmm. replied to me and said, keep clinging to your corrupt power, blue gal. This is why I can't get drift glass off my damn TV. That's He's right. On every single cable news show, dictating the damned narrative. He's, he's like the liberal Ben Shapiro <laughs> who goes on ABC to complain that nobody will let him say anything in the public uh, space. Isn't that a shame? You know, and I, it's a and shame that people silence Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, I just want to, I, I just want to come to your campus and <laughs> and spout Nazi propaganda and yeah. call liberals assholes and piss on everyone. And why won't you pay for my right to do that? Yeah. You now yeah. why are you silencing me? That's why he has to go onto a major television network. Right. Uh, and right. complain. Not even that cable. <laughs> complain He's that on he, ABC. And complain that he has no public platform for his shitty, shitty, insane asshole Nazi views. <laughs> 
Um, but yes, I'm exactly like that. Uh, I, I'm getting my $300,000 check from the liberal equivalent of whatever the fuck Veritas is. Um, I'm certainly going to get an award from, I don't know, uh, Justice Sotomayor for all the good work I do on the uh, on the blogs. And uh, no, this is this is the part that just, you know, this is why uh, I, I appreciate what that person said. Made me laugh. But you can't if you're on public social media and you're engaging conservatives to sharpen your sword and amuse an audience, that's fine. Yep, but yep. please, please, I'm addressing our audience. Please stop pretending you can reason with these people. Yep, you yep. cannot reason with them. Yep, you're dealing yep, with yep. essentially political livestock. Don't quit, quit, quit pinning your hopes on trying to reach these people with reason. They're, you're never going to do it. It's never, ever going to happen. Um, and, and it is maddening to see good, sane, um, uh, good-hearted people continuing to essentially argue with wax statues, with, you know, with mannequins yeah. who, who are yep. audio animatronic assholes who have no interest at all in anything except making you cry. And the more you, you sort of, I want to engage, I want to open my heart, I want to I I work with you on our common problems, they, they use that as an opportunity to stick the knife in deeper. You know, these people yep. are not interested in anything you have to say. They only want to make you cry and cringe and beat you into a corner because they've been told – by people who still who are making tens of millions of dollars every fucking year yep, that yep. you are the enemy, that you are a traitor, that you're a monster, that all of their problems are caused by you. And all yep. they want to do is ruin your life. And every day, people who run that machine pocket untold wealth for doing exactly that. And stop trying to reason with them. Mm -hmm. You cannot reason with them. What you can do is just call them Nazis. Yeah, you, uh, you can just uh, and again, I've, I've been saved a lot of time because pretty much anyone who has engaged with me on the social media at the, let's say, Matthew Dowd level blocked me. Oh, sure. Uh, because oh, they don't sure. want to hear about it. And, and it is weird to watch them through a different window because I have many Twitter accounts. Um, watch them come to my point of view a year later. Yeah. They do. They, these are people who, who have a professional career interest in not seeing what's happening to their country because they are deeply complicit in all the horror they see around them. Mm -hmm. And they own the microphones, they own the cameras, they own the TV, they own the stations, they own the, they own the newspapers, and they are absolutely not going to put a voice of dissent, true dissent, at the table anywhere near them. This is why um, what I saw just this week, uh, if I may take a slight detour. Mm -hmm. small, this, is, gonna, this is our last detour, folks. Right, and then we're, we're gonna run winding the news, up. Then we're going to run through the news, which is crazy. Uh, yeah. Watching Anna Marie Cox, who, who does a fine job on uh, with friends like these. Yeah. Uh, who wrote a column at the Washington Post because this is not a criticism of her, by the no, way. No, Just hang, hang on for the lit. Hang on for the story. This is, <laughs> but this is this is uh, this is how things work. This is uh, a story. Yeah. This is a story. Anna Marie Cox has worn, worn a lot of media hats in her life um, and fallen from a very high place, relatively speaking, into a not so high place. But now she has a byline at the Washington Post because right. – and her byline says crooked media. Right. She has a large media company promoting her, and that's mm -hmm. good for her. Good. That, that's awesome. And she used her byline at the Washington Post to write a column about why she thinks Al Franken should resign. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, she's an Al Franken constituent. So yeah, she she's voted Minnesota, for she, Al Franken in the Senate. Yeah, right, right. Does. Right. So and, she, has, she has real cred for writing this. But yeah. go ahead. And, and yeah. But she, she gets to go into rooms that – other people don't get to go into because she has a byline at the Washington Post. Right, right. Um, so she gets to go on the Morning Joe show. Isn't that exciting? And talk about why she thinks, as a constituent of Al Franken, she thinks Al Franken should right. resign. And there's yep. a semicircle. And mm -hmm. at the semicircle, there's her and a bunch of people. And, and there's 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 Joe Scarborough. And there's the the uh, the unseen but palpable presence of Mark Halperin. Uh, yep. And there's Mike Barnacle. 10 feet away from her, 10 feet of lucite tables, all that separate her from Mike Barnacle. And she and Joe Scarborough, who need each other, Joe Scarborough needs her credibility to promote the fact that he's really an independent, that he has nothing to do with all the shit that's happening around him. And she needs him to be, you know, to, to uh, level up her media score. She needs to be someone who gets to go on shows like this. Mm -hmm. So they have a mutual dependent relationship. And Joe Scarborough clearly doesn't like uppity women interrupting him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He, yep. he really just sort of looked at her like, I could throw your ass out of here tomorrow. You know, right now, I will throw you out of here if you keep mouthing off to me. But here's the part that I find hilarious. She's on the show to parse with him the article she wrote in the Washington Post. 
Yep. Smack yep. in the middle of the article is a mention of Mark Halperin and boo-hoo Mike Barnacle bitching and moaning about how this will kill him. There was no need to kill my good, close, personal friend, Mark Halperin. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. Anna Marie Cox's podcast, which is under the Crooked Media umbrella, has one predicate, which is I want to have uncomfortable conversations with people that I disagree with. Yeah. That's it. I don't want to talk about food or dogs or the weather or politics or football. I want to get right in there with people that I disagree with and have an uncomfortable conversation every time we talk. Well, there's Mike fucking Barnacle 10 feet away, and you wrote about him in the article you are discussing, and, and in a very negative way. And there's the unseen but palpable presence of Mark Halpert. And yep. the one thing they didn't talk about was Mike Barnacle and Mark Halpert. Yeah. Because that is not allowed on TV. What you are watching is a performance. You're watching a puppet mm -hmm. show. You're watching a mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. And there's no way on earth they're going to allow that to happen in the controlled, contained space. We're not going to have a real conversation about this shit because half the people on this panel will be fired. Right. So we're going right. to have a pretend conversation. Well, not to mention, we're not going to talk about at all uh, how Joe Scarborough spent the last two Christmases at Mar-a-Lago. No, no. And all of the times that Donald Trump got to phone in to the Morning Joe show. And use his and... girlfriend as a footstool. Right. We're not right. going to talk about any of that. We're all, again, the 18 month rule, only going to talk about the shit that happened after I stopped being part of the circus. Mm -hmm. we're all, the, mm -hmm. Every one of these fuckers, it's the party went wrong the day I left. Yeah. And, yeah. and any discussion that the calendar might be longer than that and you might be really deeply complicit in the shit that you're now decrying is mm -hmm. absolutely off the table. We're not yep. talking about that. So while we talk about the, the Weinstein complicity machine in Hollywood, which is this entire structure set up to make sure he got away with murder and nobody ever called him out on it, there's an equally pernicious complicity machine in the media that has to do with people like Joe Scarborough. There's an entire mm -hmm. media structure built around never calling them out for the heinous political and ideological shit that they pulled for their entire fucking career. Yep. And that machine yep. ain't going down. Because everybody cashes the check at that ATM. Right, right, right. So, Except for us. <laughs> fucking need you. So let's blitz through the news really fast. Absolutely. Now Go we, right ahead. Number one. Right. No bots of all soup for you. Uh, Nazi sympathizer, sympathizer Donald Trump decided he doesn't want Jewish Democrats at the White House Hanukkah party. Mm-hmm. It's so fucking perfect, I couldn't write it. Yeah. Because, again, yep. it would be tossed out. No, 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 no. Really, you're singling out Jewish Democrats to insult on Hanukkah publicly. Really? That's that seems stupid, even for President Stupid. But you know what? Why not? Uh, yeah. I just I just threw a, 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 a satchel charge in the middle of Jerusalem for no fucking reason other than, hey, you know what I discovered from George Bush? The one thing that, that Donald Trump learned from George Bush, start a war. People forget all the shit you did. Mm -hmm. you, get a, mm -hmm. you get a blank check. You get a, you get a do over. Well, I want to do over. So let's either start a war with goddamn North Korea or I'll start a war in the Middle East. But I'm going to start a war someplace. And all you people who are bitching about how awful I am will focus your cameras on that and leave me the fuck alone to loot the rest of the place. Yep. Yep. Number two. So there's so much Russia news this week. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Donald Trump Jr. Got an email. In September of 2016, offering the decryption key and link for the hacked Wiki documents. WikiLeaks, the key to WikiLeaks, yep. Donald yep. Trump Jr., you're going to jail. Donald Trump Jr. cited attorney-client privilege when he <laughs> should have said attorney-daddy privilege. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was Me well, and daddy privilege. Me and yeah. daddy were out fishing, and we decided to talk about how maybe sometime I should lie to the Congress and tell them shit that ain't true because of treason and a lot of money. But when I say things to daddy, daddy says I don't have to tell nobody. So, yeah. okay, I'm done talking. Do I get to leave now? And that's what I believe it was uh, Adam Schiff who said, uh, yeah. Hillary Clinton sat in here for 11 hours. So you can just quit looking at your fucking watch, Junior. And sit, sit. Yeah, and he yeah, just said, no, yeah. I have, I have attorney-client privilege. Everything I say uh, under any venue, I have an attorney, a little attorney who sits in my pocket. And he comes yeah. out and I put him on the table. It's like the elf on the shelf. I put a little attorney on the table, and everything I say under every, every circumstance is privileged. I don't have to testify have about to testify. Yep. yep. You can't make me because my dad is president. Yep. <laughs> well, also, too, uh, apparently Donald Trump Jr. also uh, uh, asked – or was offered by Natalia Velishskaya, which I'm getting wrong, mm -hmm. I'm sure, uh, asked her for evidence of illegal donations of the Clinton Foundation mm -hmm. during the June 2016 yep. Trump Tower. That's collusion, That's folks. Collusion. That's collusion, yep. plain and simple, clear and plain. Uh, offering a bribe and accepting a bribe are not the same thing. If you 
<laughs> if you offer to bribe someone, you have broken the law. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Donald Trump Jr. should be in jail right now, um, but he's not. Jared Kushner should be in jail right now, but Jared Kushner right now has still has the highest possible security clearance. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Ten minutes after President Stupid was sworn in, ten fucking minutes, Mike Flynn was on his phone promising that Russian sanctions would be ripped up. Yep. That's collusion, folks. Yep. That's collusion. That's criminal collusion. And, of course, the only alternative is that every single person in Donald Trump's orbit was breaking the law as, as part of a large interlocking conspiracy. And the only person who didn't know about it was Donald Trump because he's a fucking moron mm-hmm. or in on it. So take your pick. Six to five and pick them. I'll take either one. Yep. Fifty nine percent of Americans think the Donald Trump team definitely or probably had improper contacts with Russia. You touch them above the waist, below the waist, it doesn't matter. You were touching them or you shouldn't be touching them, and that means you have to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Devin Nunez, remember him? Remember Devin? Oh, yeah. We love Devin <laughs> Nunez, who recused himself from talking about Russia, except during those times when he does not He does want to talk about stuff like that. Apparently, uh, he met with Blackwater founder Eric Prince, who probably is also going to go to jail, uh, despite his recusal from the Russia probe. Uh, this week, uh, we learned the name Hope Hicks, not as... Uh, a person we didn't know existed because we did, but as the universal all-purpose person who's to blame for everything. Hope Hicks made us do it. Hope Hicks did it. Hope Hicks was behind everything. Well, Hope Hicks is 26, 27, 28 years old and is Donald Trump's loyal retainer. So let's see how this goes. Uh, Stupid Watergate gets another Martha Mitchell. This yes. Time, this is this is obviously, this is my favorite story. It's, it's small, but it's hilarious. George Papadopoulos' fiance told ABC News that he was no coffee boy. My man was in on everything. <laughs> he's, he's a big man. He told me himself. He's got Donald Trump on speed dial. And and it's just flawless because you just get this distinct impression of this woman who whose who's fiancé she believes is a big man. And she's going to go tell people about the fact that he was in on everything. He knew everybody. He talked to everybody. He gave everybody all kinds of information. I saw correspondence that my boyfriend is a big, important man, not a nobody. So that's exciting. Yep. Uh, Donald Trump has now publicly admitted, just, from, just as a reminder, that he uh, broke the law and obstructed justice. Yep. Um, yep. Period. But again, this this will be the end of the, this episode of Perry Mason. You mean there's a tweet that says, yes, I knew he was lying and I told yep. the FBI to stop investigating him? Yeah. Period. Yeah. Scene. Yeah. We're done. We go to the office with Hamilton Berger and 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 uh, and Perry Mason are, are sipping uh, scotch talking about, I can't believe that fucking idiot admitted everything on the stand. Well, Donald Trump has done so. And his lawyer, his very, very stupid lawyer, uh, decided he wrote those tweets. And anyway, it doesn't matter yeah. about the tweets because <laughs> – a president can do whatever the fuck he wants. The president, can't. president can't obstruct justice the president can't because they're presidents. <laughs> and every hey, hey, drift class. Every speaking of that, oh, go ahead, oh, go please. ahead. Finish every up. history, every first year history and first year law student go really. Yeah, I think yeah. you got that wrong. I think you got that wrong, especially since it was obvious that during the Clinton years, yes. Clinton could do all of those things. Sure, you know, when it's a Republican, and <laughs> did did you get? To uh, uh, our favorite pointy-headed House member yet? No, 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 because that's – oh, no, this is – it's just so – it's so beautiful. Uh, Paul Manafort is going – probably going to go back to, to House jail because yep. he just can't stop breaking the law. Paulie Walnuts cannot stop – He can't stop tra- talking to Russians in Russia <laughs> by going to it. Russia and hiding out in Russia. And I was going to sit in his house <laughs> and wait for the polonium to arrive because <laughs> – Paulie is into some bad people for some deep money, and he needs his passports and his money back. Thank you very much. He's not going to get them. And today we learned that Robin Mueller has, in fact, issued a subpoena for all of Donald Trump's banking records. So now we're going to find out about Deutsche Bank, and we're going to find out about all that other shit, and it's going to be delightful. Um, That's just the Russia stuff. That's literally just the Russia stuff. And everyone's favorite, lop-headed... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Lop-headed Javert. Trey Gowdy. <laughs> uh, thank you, Charlie Pierce. Lop-headed Javert. Uh, the man who made Benghazi famous over and over again mm-hmm. um, decided, I don't want to investigate nothing but Russians. No, no. You know, not everyone has to investigate everything. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. <laughs> resources. Everyone should realize we have limited resources. We're very limited resources. Here. We're very busy up here, not passing anything, and except b- except liberalizing gun laws right. on the anniversary of Sandy Hook. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, but I got breaking news, Drift Glass. Breaking, real, tru- truly, Bra- breaking truly news. breaking, truly breaking. Okay. Within the past half hour, I'm sitting down. Uh, a the. One of the Trent Franks uh, staffers uh-huh. uh, has now uh, 
reported that uh, Trent Franks offered her five million dollars to be a sex surrogate. That's nice. Uh, sex surrogate, pregnancy surrogate, and sex surrogate, wow. and sexy sex time. Wow. Five million dollars. Uh, for this little house member from you know yeah. the West, he's he's out there. How did he get five million dollars that he could then That's... just give to a staffer? Where did he get yeah. all that money? Have you seen Trent Franks? That's you a know? really good question. <laughs> the Phoenix New Times, because he's from Arizona, the Phoenix New Times found his personal net worth, huh? which comes from his shares in an oil company, oh. skyrocketed to thirty three million dollars after he voted repeatedly to deregulate the oil industry. Oh, that's so smart of him. See, I've always thought he was just a dumbass, but he's a smart man. <laughs> he's a smart man. He doesn't know how to cover his tracks, but he's a smart man. Um, so uh, he had $5 million to offer uh, one of his staffers to have sex with him mm -hmm. uh, for sex with the sex. And uh, but, you, you know, what I really want to do is plant the seed. Right. So, right. yeah, I, I just want to point out, Luca, that's $5 million more than anyone has ever offered me for anything like that. It's five million dollars more than we'll ever have, right. but that's okay. Right. We're 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 we we are over the tragedy of losing half our income from Amazon. Right. We're working hard to make that up in other ways. Uh, we appreciate everyone that shopped Amazon, and I'm really sorry if you bought anything after October first from a from our yeah, they, link. They just, we are not going to get that they money. Just took that back. They just took that back. It's gone. Um, uh, however, and so yeah. I will take half of what – I will take 10 percent of what Trent Frank was offering in cash for impregnating you with ideas <laughs> and words Bro. and vocabulary <laughs> and notions of how to perceive the world because that's what we do here. Oh, man. You've got such a big, huge media reach. Drift i got a huge Ooh. media reach. You know what? I, 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 uh, Stick I, I, it out, Drift Glass. <laughs> yes. All right. We're grossing people out Okay. Now. Sorry about that. Let's get back to telling people about Donald Trump and the child molester, shall we? <laughs> You know the child oh, yeah. molester that he endorsed? We can't, forget, we can't forget about the child here's a, molester. And, here's, and the RNC says, let's give the child molester a million. I'm sorry, a million. Let's give him another chance. A million dollars and another chance. And Kellyanne Conway, yeah. God bless her. She's a plucky little one. She should be offered $5 million to, to loan her uh, womb. to. That would be a baby I'd like to oh, see. God. I believe I've seen that. I believe it's called Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> um, she, she defended Donald Trump's endorsement saying the president has tremendous moral standards. Moral standing. I don't think she knows she what... She will literally say anything for money. Yes, she is a whore. In that sense, she is an absolute back alley, $20 blowjob whore. She's no morally different. There's no difference between the two. The except, idea that you would say that about Donald Trump with a straight face except, for money. Except yeah. that that back alley person does actually give value for a dollar. Uh, <laughs> uh, whereas... Well, I was going to say that... That back alley person knows that she actually did something. Well, I, right. I guess you're saying the same thing. Yeah, there's, there's an actual transaction of you yeah. know of mutual yeah. value on both sides. I don't believe that Kellyanne Conway knows what any of the words in that sentence mean, including president. Uh, world leaders have called Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem dangerous and irresponsible and unwarranted. Um, the House passed. And today, no, and today Nikki Haley responded to that and said, you guys don't have any standing to say anything to us about anything. Shut up. Shut up. And, no, you and, shut up. And, and, and you know who who just kind of had a little mini mini coronary when she said that, Mrs. Greenspan. Yeah, Mrs. Greenspan. Because her 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 Chardonnay parties are over for the well, foreseeable f future. You, you mean France? You mean England? You mean all of our Western European allies don't know what they're talking about when it comes to the world stage? You know really? Who, who served? Who served? I'm not sure if it's active, but but served proudly in the Israeli Defense Force. Yes, I do. David Brooks's it's David son. Brooks's son. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And it's sort of in, in this well, and and this this really, I mean, I hate to say this because I know that the, I know how important this issue is for a lot of people. Yes, it is. Um, this isn't about Jerusalem. This isn't about. It should be. No. It should be about what we're doing in the Middle East. It should be about the decisions we're making to support Israel, not support Israel, etc. It should be about that. Right. It's not. It's about Trump's total incompetence. And, his and how he just makes a decision today mm -hmm. and does it and doesn't think about any of the consequences down downstream, world stage, whatever. Zero comprehension of what the actual issue is. It's just people will love me if I do this. Well, These, this set of people. Not that, that's a, and, and here's the thing. There are a set, a subset of American voters called conservative evangelicals who love evangelicals Trump, yeah because yeah, they totally. believe that the end it's of days in the apocalypse and yes. so that's why the the 2020 <laughs> rnc the national convention is being held on the plains of megiddo 
because <laughs> that's what they want. That's really what they want. The You're NFL, making me sad, Driftwood. No, no, don't worry. We're, we're going to win. Uh, because we don't want to have any land left in this country because Donald Trump keeps giving it away to looters. Yeah, yes, so we're going to take national yep. parks and start giving chunks of them away to his yep. plundering friends. Bears ears. And, and, the, and, and there was a over 1,000 people protest in Salt Lake City about this. So there is motivation to go against this big time. So why did he do this? Because... Because Obama did the opposite. Yeah, the only reason, that's the only reason. The black guy yeah. did the opposite, and Donald Trump is a fucking racist who hates Donald, who hates Barack Obama more than any other human being on earth. And Barack Obama won the award this year for most retweets from he in the top ten. He had three tweets that were retweeted more than any others, mm-hmm. and Donald Trump had zero. And- so Donald Trump is a failure also at Twitter, believe he it or not. He has like a, a million Russian bots pushing, pushing, pushing yeah, to get right. him over, and pushing, he still pushing, can't pushing, do it. Yeah. Um, apparently federal employees, FEMA employees may have to pay back some of their overtime for helping flood victims and hurricane victims and fire victims, because that's Mm -hmm. the kind of cheap fuckers we have running the government now. Um, less than two days, literally less than two days after taking control of the CFPB, which is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Mm -hmm. Mike Mulvaney has told the bureau to withdraw their support for a position under which nationwide would have to pay $8 million in penalties for misleading more than 100,000 mortgage customers. So, you know, mm-hmm. he got right in there and went to work doing the worst thing you can possibly imagine. And and it's to gut the protection that the Bureau set up specifically to protect people like you and me. And we mm-hmm. can't have that because then right. some places like Trump University might not be able to, you know, make money, make money pick our pockets. Um, all non-tax experts are stunned, are really truly stunned at how, at how shitty and awful this tax plan is and what a naked act of plunder it really is. It's just it's there's it's just horrifying. That one person was was quoted as saying a tax expert who remains nameless said, holy crap, what is this? <laughs> because it's shitty. I mean, it's shitty and it'll pass. Yep. Uh, hang it by one vote. Uh, Susan Collins might or might not take if they stuff enough cash in her pocket, she'll do it because she's at heart a Republican. Uh, but that's the way things are. Republican House wants concealed weapons everywhere. Mm-hmm. So they're pushing through a bill that will let you carry concealed weapons in states that don't allow concealed weapons because you can't ever have enough concealed weapons in this country when crazy people are running the government. Uh, Eric Prince plus Oliver North plus Mike Pompeo equals big fun because that that is Donald Trump's. Eric Prince is a monster uh, and Oliver North is a is a traitor. And Mike Pompeo is the new head of the CIA. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And might be the new secretary of state. Um, and might be creating a secret police force to root out government employees that are not loyal to Donald right. Trump. Right. It, uh, it will completely go bypass the chain of command and due process and just spy on people uh, as a private entity under the control of the president of the United States. Germany sees Donald Trump as a bigger challenge than North Korea or Russia. And Germany's acting foreign minister has said mm-hmm. the relations between our two countries will never be the same now. Mm-hmm. Never. I, mm-hmm. I think that in 50 years, they'll be better. But um, yeah, yeah. And Trump, because a woman will be in charge of them. Right. And a woman will still be in charge of Germany and a woman will be in charge of France. And we'll all say, oh, oh, no, we're not going to go this way. No, no. no and no. finally, yeah, no. Donald Trump, uh, because the FBI keeps not um, locking up Hillary Clinton. Right. And raiding pe- his political enemies and keeps not dragging Rob, uh, Robert Mueller behind the, the barn and beating him up. Uh, the Republican reputation, according to Donald Trump, is in tatters. Mm-hmm. That's now the worst in history um, mm-hmm. because it really is. It's like they sit up nights thinking, OK, what is is there anything left shitty that we can do? There's a whole list of really, really shitty, awful, terrible, destructive, anti-American, gut this country, loot the place, piss on the ashes, things we can do. Have we left any of them undone? Because we really, really want to fuck this place up because Putin wants it that way. And that's pretty yeah. much exactly what's happening. Mm-hmm. Vladimir Putin runs Donald Trump. And Donald Trump's directive is take this country and and kill it as fast as possible. Yep. And the Republican yep. Party are like, do we get do we get paid? Are we getting paid? Do we get tax cuts? Pff, fuck yeah. It's the same transaction they have with Donald Trump that um, James O'Keefe has with Project Veritas, which is, yes, what I do is horrible, shitty, destructive, and awful, and I will leave nothing but ruin in my wake, but they're going to give me a big check, so I'm going to keep doing it because they keep paying assholes like me bigger and better dollars to keep morons like you voting for the people who are fucking up the ass. So yep. Each week, 
We post to our Facebook. Each week, we <laughs> post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. And we're bringing back an Internet Kitty this week, who was an Internet Kitten a while back. And it's now just so big. I don't know how many times we've had Yoda on, but Yoda is the cat of our friend Steve from Manhattan, yeah. otherwise known as Bloggenfreude. Uh, Yoda's gotten really big and muscular, and uh, he's gotten so big, you got to see him again at our Facebook page and website. He is now head Praetorian Guard over all of Steve's paper recycling. Oh, my God. It is all mine. Stop. Yes. Uh, you can send your Internet Kitty, and we do need more Internet Kitties or other pets. We do now have it open to whatever you have at your house that you love. Uh, send your pets to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Uh, I'm going to work on thank you notes this weekend. I have one particular thank you note already sealed up and ready to go. Uh, one of our listeners sent me hand spun yarn again. I have now have three in my collection. Uh, one hand dyed that's sort of ocean colored from many. These are from years ago, and I just I can't knit them because they're just so beautiful. Uh, another listener sent me. Uh, let your blue gal flag fly hand dyed hand spun yarn that's blue and gorgeous and now i have this new collection of uh merino it is just like butter i'm telling you it's just like butter and i love it and i'm sending you a thank you note so you'll get that thank you for sending me hand spun yarn i so appreciate it uh, don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline or our Hulu guideline or however you need, need to phrase it. If you can afford to spend whatever amount per month doing something like that, do it for us in giving us the same amount of money. This is not charity. This is our job and we provide it for you. We hope you value it enough to pay for it. Thank you very much. And I, we'd like to thank also the people that went to the Illinois Times. Yes. And, and left comments. And left a yes. lot of comments. Thank you very a much lot for of that. Comments. And, and, the comments... and shared that article yeah. that was there on the Illinois Times website about us. And also the people that commented at uh, both Salon and um, the New York Times uh, article about uh, crooked media because it was through that that the author of the Illinois Times article found out about us. So you made my mom so uh, proud of me. You guys are great in sharing and spreading the news about the podcast, and that is in kind payment. We deeply appreciate it. Uh, one donor wrote us this week and said, "I couldn't make it through the week without you." Wow, thank you so much. Well, we do. We feel the same way about you guys. You <laughs> keep her in the basement and feed her. So. No. <laughs> I, I think that means literally, but you're terrible. I'm a terrible person. I, I tell people that they don't believe me, but I'm a terrible person. <laughs> no, seriously, that that made my heart pitter pat. And it uh, just yeah, I'm being, just because we feel the same way about you guys, that's why we're here. We really do. Week, so I mean, yeah, there are there are just a, a bunch of other things that we might do, but this is so rewarding, and the feedback we get from you guys yeah. is so generous and kind. Well, and if I, when I think about giving this up and getting an actual job where I, you know that would actually pay for my health insurance and get, get our bills paid, uh, which I could do. Um, in fact, I got a job offered this week. It was a part-time job. And I was like, I don't want to leave the podcast. And I just said, no, yeah. you know? yep. I got an actual physical job offer in Springfield for a part-time job this week. And I said, sorry, I'm busy. Uh, and I'm busy doing this. Republican I, party I of it, Springfield. So. will have to do without you. So yeah, the Republican party of Springfield. Well, you know, <laughs> It, it it was club for growth, honey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Money up front, honey. Money up front. Uh, uh-huh. It's now time to announce the latest winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from foxwise.biz. Check out our website to see how great they look. We're giving away a bracelet that says resist and has snowflakes on either side along with our URL on the little bracelet. Uh, the people that have received these really like them. Uh, so if you... Uh, Want to win one? All you have to do is let us know by email at proleftpodcast.com. See, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Or if you're a donor to our podcast, you already are entered. You're already entered. And that includes, we now have at our website, PayPal and Patreon. And also a GoFundMe for our air conditioner furnace. So though those links are there, uh, you can make a contribution in any way. And you are included in as an entry for the contest. Uh, if you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, get busy and do that. Uh, don't forget to use the coupon code DGBG2017 for 20% off anything, including custom orders. Uh, you're running out of time to get 
those orders in for, in time for the holidays, foxwise.biz. Um, we're running this contest as a way of saying thank you to our donors and our listeners. Our winner this week is TK. I'm just going to use initials. TK from Brunswick, Maine. She will be receiving a cuff bracelet and a $10 gift card to Donors Choose that she can donate to a school in her area or a classroom that is looking for help in an area that she supports. Uh, I love Donors Choose. Donors Choose is one of my favorite charities out there. And uh, we made this possible to let people know, know more about Donors Choose. Yeah. And no one is uh, – foxwise.biz donated these bracelets yep. to us. Yep. Uh, because she's a good liberal and she is a woman owned business mm-hmm. and she's, she is, uh, in the USA and she wants to do a good thing for us. Uh, donors choose did not pay anything to us for, um, this consideration. They are a charity that I believe in. So, you know, Foxwise is, blue, yeah. Foxwise is an American manufacturing. What? I'm sorry. Foxwise.biz. Foxwise. 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 Is an American yes. manufacturing company. Yes, they are. They're an American manufacturing company and women-owned and good liberals and old-school blogger and all that. So she's one of us, and she did this for us, and we're very appreciative. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. And as I said, we've got PayPal. We've got Patreon. We've got a, a GoFundMe going on. And we've got just our regular snail mail. We don't call it snail mail because we love the postal unions. The USPS postal address. Information is all there. ProLeftPod.com. Thank you very much for sharing our show on Facebook, Twitter, or anywhere else. We so appreciate that. Thank you. So Drift Glass. How are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, blue gal, the Internet Kitties think Donald Trump really ought to have those dentures looked at. Just think about living. Think about living. Just think about loving. Think about loving. Just think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Glass, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.